Hello and welcome back. Uh, that is right. Today I want to talk about a Terror Master NAS, a 9 bay Terror Master NAS at that. I know, weird, right? This is a system that I talked about a few weeks ago over on the Data News of the Week videos where I take all the little bits of information on stories involving data that I wasn't able to put into individual videos that I squeeze into a single one. However, I wanted to revisit this NAS because even though I put it in the Data News of the Week video, I feel like there's a little bit more to it and I wanted to revisit and talk about this NAS because it's actually pretty unusual. It also marks a kind of new direction for TerraMaster in terms of their hardware in their newer generation of systems. And although this is the first release they've put out in 2022, I get the impression they're going to be refreshing the majority of their NAS systems in the next 6 to 12 months, all to be fitted in a similar vein to this one. So, let's talk about it. This is the T9423. It is a 9-bay SATA-equipped desktop NAS. Now, if there's an image on screen already, chances are the weirdest thing about this device has already occurred to you. It's upright. It is in the same style as that PC that may be underneath your desk there while you're watching this. And normally, when I talk about desktop NASs, I'm looking at ones like these, little tiny compact device and indeed the previous and existing ranges of TerraMaster NAS solutions out there are very much in this vein whereas this one is technically the first 9-bay NAS I've ever seen. Now I say technically because there have been 9-bay NASs in a way in the past. These have been from QNAP in their combination um, hard drive and SSD combo boxes that have got five hard drive bays and four SSD bays. They are nine bays, but this is really the first nine dedicated SATA system I've ever seen. With all the drives being side profile, and this system stacked upright in a 3x3 three three configuration is designed to go in much smaller compact environments where desk space, space is at a premium. Now, you can't actually deploy the device on its side comfortably it doesn't have rubberized feet that can be applied to the side of the device and although maybe you could just pop it on some rollers pop it on you know some rubber to put it on its side that's not really how this is designed to be utilized now alongside it being the only nine bay i've ever seen and supporting the usual rate configurations the cpu and memory combination inside is you know relatively modern in terms of what's going on with nas right now with a few extra twists the CPU inside is that Intel N5105 processor. Uh, the, it may also be the N5095, for those that aren't aware, due to the pandemic and its effects on the CPU refreshes over at Intel, the result has been that there's been a lot of overlap on a number of the uh, CPUs that they have generated within their sub-ranges with each refresh. And uh, because of this large backing up and changes and stock being available all around, around the world, three CPUs in the N5105, the N5095 and the N5095A have all kind of been rolled out and available at the same time. They're very, very similar CPUs. And it's very hard to differentiate between them. Um, chances are, if you are you know, interested in knowing the difference, the N5105 is by the tiniest degree the better CPU of the three, but it's so small that you probably never even would utilize it. And it's just a slight improvement in GPU encoding, and I really do mean terribly slight there. It's a quad core 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.9 gigahertz per core. It's rated pretty well on CPU benchmark. And this CPU uh, with embedded graphics on board support a great floating point hardware encryption and uh, that embedded graphics on board allowing 1080p and 4K transcoding is partnered with the default 8 gig of DDR4 memory, which is, again, great to hear. 8 gig of memory there on this system when the majority of systems arriving at the moment and throughout 2022 are arriving with 4 gig of memory with this CPU is a lovely bonus, although I'm a little surprised that it arrives with um, a maximum supported uh, memory of 32 gigabytes when the majority of systems that involve this CPU say they max out at 16. So I don't know if something they've done with the chipset to allow uh, a better arrangement there. And I will talk again about the chipset shortly. Um, but overall, I'm still surprised this supports up to 32 gig. I don't doubt them. But if I did have one here in the studio, I would like to check just how much of that 32 gigabytes is usable by the end user, you know, simultaneously. Because the uh, compatibility of that processor being listed at 16 at some retailers. Now, 
Another thing this system brings to the table that I'm quite impressed by is the fact that it arrives with an M2 SSD caching slot. This is the very first TerraMaster NAS that I've seen that has arrived with M2 SSD caching on board. It takes advantage of an NVMe SSD, and it, but it's a single bay, a PCIe Gen 3 times 2 slot there, so 2,000 megabytes per second possible. I'm still waiting for confirmation if it can be used for general storage or just for caching alongside that larger nine bays of storage. But again, the single M2 slot there is quite unusual with most devices arriving if they do support M2 SSD um, slots chances are they arrive with two slots to allow the option of not only read caching but read and write caching simultaneously now why is there one slot if I had to take an educated guess I'd say that single slot is due to the chipset and the PCI lanes of this processor being pushed to breaking point and normally when you have a system Every two bays of storage will take up a degree of the available lanes on offer. And this nine bay system is kind of sharing out the PCIe lanes in a way that other systems wouldn't have. So I think chances are the reason for the M2 slot being available only in a single slot largely goes down to that chipset there. Now, the other thing about this system that sets it apart from other TerraMaster NASs and is another brand first in the form of this system is the fact that it arrived with 2.5 GBE. It has two 2.5 G uh, copper ports there on the rear. So each port can provide you up to a maximum 279 megabytes per second, but they can also be link aggregated to give you a combination 5 GBE if you have a link aggregated supported switch or a smart switch. So again, these nine bays of storage, you've got some nice options there in terms of output. Now, would have been nice to see 10 GBE on this, but I would argue if there is a 10 GBE version of this in the works, we won't see it for a while. And if we do see it, I reckon they'll have to trim some features back on this in order to accommodate 10 GBE on that architecture. Perhaps we won't see that cache port. Perhaps we'll have a single 10 GBE port and you getting rid of those 2.5s overall. But still, nonetheless, it's still a great system from what I'm seeing here. And if they can maintain this kind of architecture with the caching bay, with uh, that particular CPU and above, and 2.5 GPE, the hardware on their next generation, if it's priced as similarly as the previous units, are gonna give you an incredible hardware experience, experience at a better price point there. Of course, TOS isn't quite as evolved uh, in software terms as the likes of Synology and QNAP at the moment. There's not, there isn't any AI services, but they are better than they were, and they are making improvements along the way. I would say, overall, this is a system to keep an eye on. Yes, it is more designed, I would say, as a large-scale backup device, but that CPU and architecture is going to assist things like Plex Media Server and a lot of third-party iSCSI and targeted storage options too. It has an internal PS 250-watt uh, internal PSU, and the system arrives with two years of manufacturer's warranty. I'm not sure that warranty could be extended, but still nonetheless, I like what I'm seeing here. I'm less keen on the lack of integration with USB 3.2 Gen 1, particularly given this nine bay device with each bay supporting up to a maximum 20 terabytes. That's a lot of data. And the idea of having a nice low key logical USB backup that's greater than five gigabits per second would have been nice, but still nonetheless, this is still an announce worth keeping an eye on, and I hope to do a review on this in the future. I just wanted to talk a lot more about it than I did in my news video. Let me know if you've got any questions about this, and also look out for a couple of TerraMaster videos coming in the next week or so regarding the software and a new update on their latest version of their software, hopefully coming very, very soon. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click like if you want to learn more about this device and storage in general. Click subscribe, and otherwise, I will see you next time.